As the sun rises over the Tanzania plain, group of Hadza men gliding across the landscape toward the bush, bows and arrows in hand as they seek the day prize. Let's get it. This is how far deep we have to go. You got it? Wow! That's crazy! Wow! Yo! Okay, this is such a very wild bush pig. They got it. The hats are very excited, very, very happy. It's been a bit. A long walk until we got this one, huh? Unara! Right, you happy? Perfect. <coughs> you have got meal for the family now. Umpata nyama ya ya familia. Hey! Hey! Okay. It's a big one, huh? Wow, look at it. All these dogs deserve a lot of meat as well. They did all the job, I would say. To go through a thick bush like this, they got to haul the pig down and now we have it. It's good for the family, it's good for the Hadza. Hadza will have a good meal tonight. Yep. Let's go, Tana. Nende? Okay. Thank you. You okay, buddy? Huh? You did a good job. Look, you got a blood all over you. You'll have a lot of meat tonight. Hey, puppies. I have to say the dogs have done a lot of work. It's amazing to have all this, a big pack of dogs like this. They have done it, they did it. And here we have a wild bush pig. There it is. The Hadza have hunted down a large wild bush pig. An animal this size can ensure sufficient food for the entire family. However, regardless of the size of the kill, the Hadza will almost always share food with every family members. On a successful hunt, Azabe will usually immediately start the fire and cook a portion of meat and feast on a celebration before taking the remainder of game back to their family.
Máme tu tu večinu, ja. Early morning, the Hadza people typically begin their hunting expeditions. Hunting is an integral part of their way of life, and they rely on their hunting skills and knowledge of their local environment to secure food for their community. I think after I went through the bushes, some piece or some thorns went into the uh, one of the guys here, and now they were trying to get it out. <laughs> Honey is an important food source for the Hadzabe people. The Hadza have a long-standing tradition of honey gathering, which has been a significant part of their deity for generations. <laughs> the Hadza practice a form of honey hunting known as honey gathering. They search for wild beehives in the natural habitat. Typically, found in a tree holes or rock crevices. Honey gathering is usually done by men, women and sometimes children as it requires specific knowledge and skills. They create smoke by burning specific type of plants or by using torches made from dry grass. The smoke help calm the bees and allow the honey gathering to access the hive without being stung. Once the hive is accessed, the Hadza carefully extract the honeycomb. They may use tools like a stick, bag, or animal bones to scrap or pry the honeycomb from the hive. The honeycomb is then brought back to their camp or village for further processing. Honey holds significant cultural and nutritional value for the Hadza. It is consumed both as a direct food source and as an ingredient in various dishes. Honey is high in calories and natural sugar, providing a quick source of energy for the Hadza, particularly during the period of the food scarcity. Honey is also shared among the community members, reinforcing social bond and reciprocity. Honey has not only nutritional but also medicinal and rich significance for the Hadza. They believe that a honey processing healing properties and may use it to treat certain elements or as a part of traditional remedies. Additionally, honey is used in a ritual and ceremony, playing a role in spiritual practice and cultural celebration.
kudu, specifically the greater kudu, is a large antelope species found in part of Africa, including Tanzania, where the Hadza live. Kudu can provide a substantial amount of meat, and their hunting may be influenced by factors such as their population density, behavior, and the Hadza's hunting techniques and preference. It is worth noting that uh, due to changes in land use, conservation efforts, and modernization, the Hadza's traditional hunting practice and dietary pattern are undergone transformation. They are increasingly facing challenging in maintaining their traditional way of life and adapting to external influences. Owls are nocturnal birds of prey found in various regions including Tanzania where the Hadza reside. The Hadza hunter might target owls for their meat as part of their hunting activities. However, it is important to recognize that uh, the Hadza's hunting practice are shaped by their cultural beliefs, environmental condition, and the availability of game animals. They often prioritize the sustainable use of resources and have deep respect for the natural world.
porcupines are one of the animals that the Hadza people hunts as a part of their traditional hunting practice. Porcupine provide a source of meat and fat for the Hadza people. As hunter-gatherers, they rely on diverse diet to meet their nutritional needs and porcupines offer a source of protein and essential nutrients. Porcupines are relatively common in the region where the Hadza live, making them an accessible and a frequently encountered prey animal. The abundance may make them an attractive target for hunting. Porcupines have a unique defensive mechanism of quills, which they raise when threatened. However, the Hadza people have developing hunting techniques and tools to overcome these defenses. They may use specialized weapons like spear or arrows to immobilize the porcupine or trap it in a way that avoids injury from the quills. Hunting plays an essential role in Hadza culture, providing food and social cohesion and a sense of identity hunting porcupine, like other animals, may hold a cultural and symbolic significance for the Hadza people, reinforcing their traditional practice and values. The Hadza often hunt in a small group, typically consists of several men with varying degrees of experience and expertise. These hunting parties may be formed based on the kinship ties, friendship, or simply individuals who choose to hunt together. The Hadza possesses a deep understanding of their surrounding ecosystem and the behavior of local animals. They use the tracking skills to locate potential prey, following fresh tracks, sign, or other indicators that may lead them to game animals. They pay close attention to animal behavior, such as feeding patterns or signs of movement, to predict their location. The Hadza employ various hunting techniques and tools adapted to different types of game. They may use bow and arrows, spears, or traps, depending on the target animal. The choice of hunting method is influenced by factors such as the animal's behavior, habitat, and the skill of the hunters involved. Hunting among the Hadza often involves cooperation and coordination within the hunting party. When nearing the vicinity of the target animal, the Hadza employs stealth and silence to avoid detection. They may move carefully, utilizing cover from trees, bushes, or natural terrain features to remain hidden while closing the distance to their prey. They communicate in using subtle hand signals, gesture, or even verbal cues to synchronize their action. This teamwork increasing the chances of successful hunts and ensure the safety of the hunters. The Hadza people traditionally hunt together and their diet consists of a variety of wild animals and plant food. While they may hunt and consume a range of animal species including mammals, they also consume bat-eared fox. The bat-eared fox is a small canid species found in parts of Africa, including Tanzania. It primarily feeds on insects, particular termites. While it is not common for humans to consume bat-eared fox, in certain circumstances, the Hadza might hunt and eat this animal, as they have knowledge of local fauna and the ecological relationship. It is important to note that the Hadza's hunting practice have evolved over centuries, 
and are deeply intertwined with their culture and spiritual beliefs. However, external factors are increasingly impacting their traditional way of life, leading to changes in hunting patterns and the adoption of alternative livelihood strategies. While Hadzabe have a varied diet that includes a wide range of animals, white-tailed mongoose seems to be as a part of the irregular food sources. The white-tailed mongoose is found in various parts of Sub-Sahara Africa, including Tanzania, where the Hadza reside.
The Hadza people traditionally have a close relationship with dogs, which they use for various purposes such as hunting guarding and companionship while dogs are not typically fed the same food as human it is possible that uh, the hadza may occasionally share some small amount of food with their dogs including ogali Ugali is a staple of food in many East Africa countries, including Tanzania, where the Hadza reside. It is a thick porridge-like dish made from maize flour or other grains, cooked with water to a dough-like consistency. Ugali is a filling and energy-rich food that provides carbohydrates. Feeding dogs ugali, however, will likely be in a small portion and as an occasional treat rather than regular part of their diet. Dogs have a different dietary requirement compared to humans, and their primary diet should consist of a balanced dog food or diet appropriate for canines. <laughs>